What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is America's Nuclear Warriors uh, Global Strike Command. There's a big red button on the screen currently and hopefully we don't get to that. Don't press it, don't press it. Yeah, I'm assuming that is to send all the nukes um, obviously everywhere. It's one of them. America has a great nuclear um, armory, I guess yes. I guess is the word. Yeah. The rest of the world has um, nuclear weapons as well. If we get there, it's pretty much the end of the world. But it's interesting to see what is out there. So let's get into this video. Smash that button, uh, smash that button if you enjoy the kind of video. Smash that subscribe button as well, the absolute legends. Um, anything to add? I just hope they don't press it. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> It'd be pretty scary if they did and we wouldn't last long. So let's get straight into it. America's Nuclear Warriors uh, Global Strike Command, what we got. A single red buzzer squawks loudly, and immediately there's a flurry of activity from the assembled flight and ground crews. At a civilian airport somewhere in Oklahoma, men rush to a line of seven waiting B-52 stratofortresses. Ground crew personnel pull the blocks holding the big plane's wheels in place and do last-minute mechanical checks. The jets have been ready for short-notice takeoff for two days already, as the world hung on the brink of full-scale nuclear war. Now, somebody's gone and pushed the Earth over the edge. Inside the B-52, flight crews make ready to fly. The radar navigator and electronic warfare officer perform last-minute checks on their equipment. The electronic warfare suite, especially, will be critical in the coming hours, and will be the giant bomber aircraft's sole defense against enemy surface-to-air missiles. At the cockpit, the pilot and co-pilot fire up the engines and run over their last-minute checklists. The navigator breaks open the classified documents detailing the different nuclear attack missions the aircraft might be called upon to undertake. The men won't know which mission to fly until they're past their positive control points, the last chance to recall the big bombers. The giant planes are carrying over 70,000 pounds of wow. nuclear weapons in That's the form insane. of pylon-mounted nuclear-tipped cruise missiles in the wings, as well as cruise missiles in the bomb bays, which they share with eight large gravity bombs. One by one, the planes edge up to the runway, almost nose to tail in the tight space of the small civilian airport. Normally, the B-52s would operate from a military base, but with the threat of nuclear war, the Air Force scattered its most important aircraft across hundreds of smaller civilian airfields. Any enemy wishing to knock out the U.S.'s airborne nuclear fleet would have to launch hundreds of simultaneous strikes at once, well beyond the capability of any of America's enemies. With the assistance of JATO units, small rockets that help speed the big planes into the air, the B-52s begin their ascent leaving clouds of billowing black smoke before. belching out from behind their massive, powerful engines. Each plane carries aloft enough nuclear firepower to decimate a small country, and there's dozens of them taking to the air from airfields all over the United States and in bases overseas. O-Plan 8010-12 dictates the U.S.'s response in a nuclear confrontation, and each B-52 lumbering into the sky is one small part of an overall strategy involving thousands of moving parts. Deep under the waters of the Pacific and Atlantic, emergency war orders are flashed out to the ballistic missile submarines of the United States' silent service. Theirs will be the first to strike in what will become humanity's third and possibly last world war. From 50 meters yeah, under the waves, enough. the hatches on a dozen launch tubes holding nuclear-tipped Trident ballistic missiles are popped open by hydraulics. The sound is unmistakable. The Chinese submariners desperately searching for the stealthy American subs scramble to locate and neutralize these nuclear strike platforms. In seconds, though, it'll be too late, and killing any American sub they do locate will be a meaningless gesture, as a rush of air forces each Trident missile out of its housing and into the water. Chinese sonar operators clearly hear the telltale firing of Trident rocket motors, and in moments, ballistic missiles are lifting up out of the water and screaming high into the sky. The first wave of attacks undertaken by subs closest to the Chinese shores target air defense networks and military airfields. The goal is to knock out as much of the Chinese anti-air capability as possible, allowing the Air sense. Force's airborne nuclear force to do its job. Anti-ballistic missile defenses activate across the Chinese coastline, and hundreds of interceptors are fired to try to knock out the nuclear-tipped missiles. But there's little warning time, and to make matters worse, each Trident is equipped with multiple warheads which are released just before the missile re-enters the atmosphere. Packed with penetration aids like clouds of chaff and radar reflectors, yeah. the I'm pretty sure I've heard before that like maybe like 50, maybe that's a, an oversell, of heads come out and there's only like three or four real ones. So you've got 46 uh, and you can only shoot so many okay. down. So there's a high, high chance you just shoot out down yeah. all the fake ones and the actual ones hit. So it's pretty unlikely to actually stop mm. one of them. The vast majority of Chinese interceptors are completely ineffective, and in moments, nuclear fire rains down on Chinese military installations. 
The next wave of Trident attacks is aimed at Chinese infrastructure, wiping out major airports, industrial centers, and government sites. One strike destroys the Three Gorges Dam, the largest hydroelectric dam in the world, and releases trillions of gallons of water all at once. The resulting wow. inland tsunami devastates communities downstream and kills almost as many people as a nuclear attack. U.S. Air Force B-2s, the stealthiest aircraft in the world, are already penetrating Chinese airspace. Normally the B-2s are hard to spot, but with much of the Chinese air defense network destroyed by American ballistic missile submarines, stopping them now is nearly impossible. Yet stealth is not a complete guarantee of safety. The B-2s fly a pre-planned route through various air defense zones, making course corrections as they navigate, so as to always present their stealthiest side to incoming radar. This makes them very difficult to pinpoint, but the Chinese are well aware that B-2s are in the air and are scrambling dozens of interceptors. Most of the B-2s make it to their targets, but with so much air defense radar in the air and on the ground, all looking for the stealth bombers, five of them are discovered and shot down. Those okay. that survive pop open their bomb bay doors and fire off nuclear-tipped cruise missiles. The B-2's targets are more makes dangerous, through. and only the stealthy planes can reach them. Their job is to eliminate Chinese military installations in central and western China, requiring them to penetrate deep into hostile territory. The nuclear cruise missiles the planes fire off allow them to safely attack targets from hundreds of miles away, though the planes each carry gravity bombs as well to be delivered to secondary targets. The B-2 attacks devastate Chinese missile sites deep in the country, but it's mostly too late. The nation has already launched a nuclear counterattack. Yeah, it's going to be the same The strikes have way. eliminated part of the enemy's nuclear capability, even if over a hundred missiles have still been successfully fired off toward the American continent. Still, every missile destroyed in its silo or mobile launcher is thousands, perhaps even millions of lives saved. There's no winning nuclear war, but the U.S. Air Force Global Strike Command has one job make the other guy lose harder. Now it's time to ensure that when the nuclear I, I dust settles... I don't think that's possible. I feel like we all just lose the same eventually, mm. you know what I mean? Even though one maybe not get as many off, I feel like the ones that get off is still going to do ridiculous amount of damage it's pretty much over yeah. anyway. Let us know what you guys think about in the comments. China cannot rebuild or resupply either its nuclear or conventional forces. After a 16-hour flight, American B-52s and B-1 Lancers are at last approaching their targets. The crews have purposefully not been told of the damage caused at home by the Chinese nuclear attacks, and none of them want to ask. Ground-based interceptors along the American Pacific coast attempted to intercept incoming missiles, but with a terrible success rate against practice targets, they are largely ineffective up against the real deal. Nuclear hellfire rains down across American cities and military bases. At least the submarine and B-2 strikes have curtailed the extent of that attack, somewhat. Approaching the enemy's coast, though, the pilots of the B-1 Lancers leading the attack descend to barely a thousand feet above the deck in an attempt to evade surviving Chinese radar. The B-52s will mirror this tactic, but only once they've come closer to their targets. Okay. Aerial refueling aircraft from the Air Force's tanker service have topped up each plane, but flying low means more drag and exponentially greater fuel expenditure. The B-1s are fast and somewhat stealthy, but the B-52s are giant targets in the sky for any surviving anti-aircraft artillery or enemy fighters. To create a safe path through hostile airspace, a few modified B-52s fly ahead of the rest of the incoming bombers, creating an electronic screen of digital noise to jam and degrade enemy radar. Hundreds of anti-air missiles are fired, but just like in the skies over Hanoi during the Vietnam War, the B-52s do an impressive job of defeating enemy anti-air systems. A few B-52s are lost, but with dozens of them penetrating deep into Chinese airspace, the losses are largely insignificant. America's land-based ballistic missile forces have long ago done their job, marking the second wave of attacks. Both How nations have each other's land-based missile sites targeted by <laughs> missiles of their insane. own, and both sides know that if they don't launch immediately, they'll never get the chance to, as enemy nuclear strikes attempt to destroy missiles in their silos. Every major Chinese city has been hit by at least one, many by three or four direct strikes. Every major U.S. city has likewise been targeted. The B-1 and B-52 crews find themselves flying over a nuclear wasteland with major cities like Beijing, Shanghai, and Chongping now mostly rubble. The land-based ballistic missile force has laid waste to every single major enemy city, and many of its moderately-sized cities as well. Now, Global Strike Command's airborne element is here to ensure that China cannot easily rebuild. The bombers fly to their designated targets across the nation, leveling major industrial centers that have so far evaded attack as well as important natural resource depots. Strategically important mines are collapsed by direct nuclear strikes, 
as well as ore refining and raw goods manufacturing hubs. Seaports all across the coast are obliterated, as well as major swaths of China's most important farmlands. Next on the list are food distribution centers, important universities and research complexes, and large stockpiles of both military and civilian goods or equipment. National defense armories and reservist bases for the People's Liberation Army and Air Forces are destroyed with nuclear hellfire, as is every major hydroelectric dam left standing. The destruction of these dams are as devastating as the nuclear strikes themselves, flooding thousands of square miles and washing away entire communities. Lastly, the B-52s move to their final targets, known government shelters. These sites are buried deep underground, and despite being secret, many are known to American planners thanks to intelligence gathered by spies and cyber attacks. The B-52s use deep penetrating munitions to target these sites, flying high and letting loose bombs capable of burrowing deep into the earth before exploding. The resulting shockwave wow. is enough to bury all but the sturdiest of underground shelters, killing thousands who thought themselves safe from attack. Their job done, the American bombers turn and head for airfields in Japan and the Philippines. Most of them won't make it, their fuel supply largely spent, or the airfields they're heading for obliterated by conventional ballistic missile attacks from the People's Liberation Army rocket force. The crews of the bombers all knew that the trip was likely one way anyway, though few of them imagined that doomsday would actually ever come. Now two countries lay in utter ruin. Though thanks to the massive penetration power of the U.S. Air Force's Global Strike Command, China has suffered a far worse fate than the U.S. The mission of Global Strike Command was never really to win a nuclear war, but instead to deter one, and failing that, to make sure that America's nuclear enemies were so thoroughly destroyed that they could not hope to match the U.S.'s own efforts at rebuilding. The men and aircraft of GSC waged the most complete and total war ever dreamt up by man eliminating not just the enemy's forces, but the ability itself to support a society capable of threatening the United States ever again. If that even matters in a post-nuclear world though, it's still anybody's guess. But that, that, that even matters because mm -hmm. everyone could be gone. It's mental that this is even a thing. It is ridiculous that it could just be boom like that, you know yeah, what I mean? World's over. Super, super scary. Um, but I guess the good thing is, is it's that bad, it's gotta deter people, you know what I mean? Yeah, and also like, it's kind of almost a what's the point because you're gonna everyone's gonna it's not gonna solve anything because everyone's gonna be dead. So. Exactly. So it deters. You'd like people. to think they wouldn't. If you did do it, you're not gonna win at all. It's game over for mm. everyone, not just you. Um, it's suicide pretty much, isn't it? Mm. Smash that button if you enjoyed this kind of video. It's been an interesting one. It's been um, it's a bit of a scary mm. one, I guess. A lot of information thrown at us and um, a bit of a doomsday one, I guess. If you enjoyed it, smash like button, smash that subscribe button as well. You absolute legends. Maybe we'll put this one with the roast. Yeah, maybe we'll put this one with <laughs> bit the roast. a light-hearted one too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, maybe just mm. a laugh and then we're all going to yeah, die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> smash the like button, guys. Smash the subscribe button and watch the video. Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you, legends, in the next one. Peace.